What's up, YouTube? Capital G here, talking Michael Stibbins uh, in Sector Deck that he won YCS Tacoma with. And first off, big shouts to my brother Slim for getting the deck profile. You did very good work, asked a lot of good, smart questions. So, uh, very good job, Slim. Now, the deck list he ran in Sector Dragonfly and Sector Hornet, the two brothers of destruction. Got to run them both, they're both equally important in the deck. He ran three copies of Ladybug, three Centipede, and Gigamantis. The nine card in Sector lineup is absolutely standard. You need to run that. Even if you have different variants, probably don't defer too much from this nine card standard. He ran the Tour Guide Engine of a Sangan and two Tour Guides. He ran two Car Card Ds, Spirit Reaper, two Troopers, and Dark Arm Dragon. No hand traps here, okay? Um, Three copies of Mystical Space Typhoon, two Pot of Duality, two Insect of Swords, Monster Born, Dark Cold, Heavy Storm. That's the uh, the new Trinity, as people are calling it. And he ran Foolish Burial and Forbidden Lance. He ran three copies of Call to Haunted, two Solemn Warnings, three Threatening Roars, and two Composed Evacuation Device. First thing I noticed was the three Threatening Roars. Now, in my version, I had recently dropped Safe Zone for Threatening Roar. Threatening Roar is absolutely ridiculous. I saw that um, a player in, I believe it was Michigan, top eight at regionals running two Threatening Roars. So I decided to drop the Safe Zones and test it. It's ridiculous in this deck. Here's the reason why. It's because if you have Centipede or Dragonfly on the field, hell, even if you just have a Ladybug, and you have access to Hornet. Your opponent can't commit to the field as long as you have Threatening Roar. Well, if you have something like Solemn Warning or a Book of Moon or something like that, your opponent can just blast it away with Heavy Storm or MST. Then proceed to kick your face in unless you have like a hand trap to stop them. Threatening Roar is chainable. So it doesn't really matter if they have any back or removal. You can stop it. If they try and run your guy over, you can stop it. And then guess what? When your opponent commits to the board, it's just like, okay, activate, get my Hornet, blow whatever the fuck you put on the board up. How salty are you going to be now? Two card card Ds makes uh, sense in this deck because you do have a tendency sometimes to open slow. Playing card card D works perfect because you have Threatening Roars. It means your opponent can't go nuts. Try and OTK you. You can just activate Threatening Roar if you play against something like Hieratics or Windups where it's just like they're just going to go, you know, spam, 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 spam. Same thing with like Mermills. Um, Threatening Roar is really what ties this together. Now, a lot of those other cards in here that, you know, they're not really tech anymore, I would say. Cards like Call of the Haunted, Card Trooper. I mean, you ba you basically know why you run these cards. Now, I will say this. He's not running Tomato. He's running Tour Guide. In retrospect, I think that that's something I would run because you play in sectors, and when you, put in, when you start setting cards, people know that it's... People know that it's freaking Mystic Tomato. They're not going to attack it. You know what I mean? People aren't... They're not stupid. You know what I mean? They're, they're, they're not going to just start attacking into cards because they know that it's the Tomato. Spirit Reaper is a good card because it gives you access to a good opening play where if you don't have the Centipede play where you're searching for your sword, it gives you another good play outside of, you know, Tour Guide and Card Trooper. Like, this format is... Pretty much about, you know, having a lot of good optimal turn one plays. Everything else, I would say, is pretty standard. The two evacs are definitely good. It was another card that I had recently, I, I dropped, uh, you know, like my torrentials for this. Just because it removes anything that you don't want to look at. It gets rid of cards like Doka. It gets rid of something like Photon Strike Bouncer. And if you're, you know, your opponent tries to bottomless your monster, you can put it back in your hand. They affect Veil or you, you're, you know, your only Insector or your Dragonfly, whatever. You put it back in your hand, summon it next turn, and just wreck them. But um, the three Threatening Roars are really what tied this deck together. It gives you the ability to basically one turn stun your opponent. It gives you the ability to effectively run Car Card D and not get your crap pushed in next turn. Uh, Spirit Reaper is definitely good. I think that the way to go now is probably going to be Tour Guides back in the deck and taking out Tomato because Tomato is just a little too obvious and it's a little too slow. You know what I mean? And I think that this works really well because you have the Levy Air plays where your opponent bottomless something. You can just get it back. And overall, I think that he did a very good job. His side deck was uh, solid. You know, the, the three copies of Soul Drain. The reason why this was probably played over D Fissure. And most people would say, well, D Fissure wrecks, you know, it, it wrecks a deck like Dark Worlds and it wrecks a deck like, uh, you know, Mermaid Atlantean's hard. Yeah, but the thing is, if you set this, 
you know, they don't know what to MST. Let's say your opponent has that MST initially. They don't know what to MST. They start trying to activate their effects. You change Soul Drain. They, then they just try. It's the same thing against Dark World. If they have Heavy Storm, you're fucked either way. So what's really the difference? The only difference is Soul Drain doesn't really conflict with something like Card Trooper. You know what I mean? So it, it lets you have a little more utility there. So, um... Thank you guys for watching. As always, it's going to be uh, interesting to see how this impacts the meta. And, um, yeah, just another example that I don't really think hand traps are really that good right now. But that's another video for another day. Thank you guys for watching, as always.